Hi everybody, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. Probably waiting on my Yellowstone report after Yellowstone had a large earthquake. It was a magnitude 3.4 by Hedgen Lake. USGS, of course, downgraded it. It was a 3.0. Here we have a current live view of Old Faithful. They're waiting for it to go off. 21 earthquakes within the last 24 hours and we'll come down they're all about the same depth and I want to go into more of that between 5.2 and 4 four miles in depth and then down here we have oh they're saying it's a 3.1 now okay originally they said it was um, a 3.0 I could be mistaken an intensity level of three. There is one felt report that was sent into USGS. Intensity level three means it was felt noticeably indoors, not always recognized as an earthquake. Standing autos would have been rocking slightly, vibration like a passing truck. This earthquake swarm started about 3.30 a.m. local time, and here you can see Hedge and Lake. Someone over there said they felt it. Yeah, I wasn't seeing things. It was originally a 3.0 here on EMSC. No reports were sent in to them, but they said it was a magnitude 3.0. So they did upgrade it, but it's actually a magnitude 3.4. I downloaded data from three different monitors. That's all I could get to work in that location. Here we have the borehole for the Madison River area. We have Denny Creek. I've talked about that. There was magma coming into the system um, just before, a couple hours actually, before the earthquake occurred. And then we have the western boundary. Yeah, look at that. Let's go to the seismic signature. There's the spectrogram. And I'll bring it down so if any of you have uh, maybe a tablet, you can see it down there at the bottom. Um, the last our second to the last line of data it says MD 3.46 and yeah this was all fault movement as uh, and it went into harmonic volcanic tremors yeah as the magma came in so I want to show you this I'm not sure on the date of this image but it shows you the direction and the different locations where the magma comes up into the system over here at the uh, kind of center bottom that is Yellowstone Lake up at the top that is Hedgen Lake okay and then I want to show you another one this here is the uh, Madison River Norris Junction Basin area all right here we have the magma reservoir at different depths we got two kilometers here on the left top left eight kilometers so that would be the closest image of the magma chamber um, at 8 kilometers and then we got 14, 70, 35, and 20. Let me make that bigger because this is the area yeah where the uh, most magma has um, accumulated. Let me go over here to 2 kilometers. Okay they got circled in red the two resurgent domes okay and then going up towards uh, the Madison River and Norris Geyser Basin you can see the accumulation of the magma and that's the location where these earthquakes occurred there's actually um, several pipes several plumes that feed into Yellowstone remember when uh, they came out with the uh, 3d model I believe that was in 2015 up at the top you can see um, possibly the two resurgent domes the plume that comes up is about 250 miles wide and remember that in park geologists who said that when they started to have magnitude 2 earthquakes uh, they would be you know getting concerned so also we got a magnitude 2.7 4.9 miles in depth um, and a 2.8 um, five miles in depth a 2.1 5.2 miles in depth 
and more recently there was a magnitude 1.1. So here we have the borehole for the Madison River area and this is the earthquake that they're saying is a 1.1 1 .1. um, but it is at least a magnitude 1.45 that is the most recent it's got a long P wave on it yeah this is fault movement this is the 2.1 that they're saying occurred at 1520 universal time again on the left we have um, the borehole for the Madison River area Denny Creek in the center and western boundary look at yeah now look at the western boundary before all these earthquakes started coming in. Let me close this. I'll make this bigger. Yeah, we are having lots of magma movement. Slow moving tremors were occurring. Let's take a look at the seismic signature of these. A lot was going on before. Now the western boundary I've talked about how I believe there's dike intrusion in that location going up to the Madison River area where um, yeah, the, the lava is trying to find a way to come up through the ground there. So if you look at that, yeah, all this was going on there. And I'm going to jump over to Denny Creek. We're having the same activity. I don't know if you can see the signature. Let me look at that. Yeah, the same activity was going on before these earthquakes occurred. We had magma coming into the system, rising up into the system. Um, yeah, so it's easy to figure out what was happening. So this earthquake was not a 2.1. It was a 2.5. I don't know if you can see it there at the bottom. A lot of you probably can't. It says 2.50. All right, we got another one right there at 1432, a fairly large one. You can see there's all kinds of small ones here. That one comes in as a 2.97. It could have been actually a magnitude 3.0. Yeah. Lots of gases and heated water came up. See that? USGS said it was a magnitude 2.8. Okay, where's the next? Well, we got all kinds of them in red. Um, this would be the next one right there at 11:30. now this is all universal time usgs says it's a 1.7 but it comes in as a magnitude 2.20 yep another magnitude 2 to be concerned about the next one marked in red is at 11:18 universal USGS tries to say it's a magnitude 1.3, but it's a 2.11. Um, yeah, seeing how the government um, doesn't appreciate the citizens that they work for. They do nothing but lie to us. I'm not surprised that they're lying continuously over the years about the size of the earthquakes. The next one marked in red at 11.04. See, these are deep earthquakes. They're not up on top. These are deep. This one, they are not even reporting. Yep, pigs are flying again. Okay, and it comes in as a 1.95. The next one marked in red at um, 10.15. They're saying is a magnitude 2.7, but it is at least a magnitude 3.07 it actually probably could be a little bit larger I ended it I don't know if it's going to show let me go back to the seismic signature here I ended it yeah too soon it probably I probably should have ended it there and then gone there so it would be a 3.14 another 3 all right, the next one at 10.05, marked in red. When it's marked in red, it means the computer picked it up and sends a text messages to the geologist, uh, more than likely there to the University of Utah or those there um, at Memlo Park to Michael Pollan 
Um, maybe he gets them. I don't know. Oops. Let me go back here. There we go. Okay, 10.05. They're saying that is a magnitude 1.8. Let's look at the seismic signature. Probably ends in there somewhere. Let me look at the spectrogram. If I do, it's still a 1.95. It should have ended right there and then right there, which would make it another 2. 2.15. Let me see if I can see the, um, let me pull it over a little bit. I hope you can see the signature. See, it was still rattling. So here we have the borehole, borehole 950. This is the Madison River area. During that time, before the earthquake started happening, I told you there was all kinds of magma coming in. And we had all kinds of popping of the ground as the pressure built. And I'll... Oops, let's see if I can find them here. Sometimes they're hard to find. Okay, right there. Right there. Let me close this. Uh, right there. I don't know if you can see it. Some of these are marked in red like this one is. That one's marked in red. Um, this one right here is marked in red. I'm going to make that bigger. Those are harmonic tremors. Yep, magma on the move. You can actually see it there. Okay. What else do we have? Okay, I got another one over here. Marked in red if I can find it. Right. Right there. And again, harmonic tremors were ongoing. Let me pull, pull this over for you. There's another one marked in red. Where is it? Right there. Harmonic tremors. Yep, magma on the move. And then we got, let me bring this down. Again, this is the borehole. The borehole only picks up what's going on under the ground. Yeah, we got some small Torlinos screw waves right there. If I can make that bigger for you. Nope, when I do that, it distorts it. Okay, we'll go back to that. Anyways, there. That's good. Yeah, Torlinos. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, it's a screw wave. A lot of you probably don't understand what a screw wave is if you're a new follower. I'll give you a link to this document. It's a uh, research paper that was published by nature.com. Mechanism Controlling Torlino Seismal Volcanic Events in Volcanic Areas. Um, volcanic activity is often preceded or accompanied by different types of seismal volcanic signals. Among these signals is the so-called Torlino, Spanish for screw event, are considered to belong to a unique class of volcano seismicity characterized by a long duration Coda, um, amplitude, modulation, and high quality factor. Here's another page that a geologist published. It says Torlinos are long period volcanic earthquake. Each Torlino lasts for several minutes and the amplitude decreases, producing a screw like pattern on seismographs. Long period seismic events are caused by the pressure fluid movement close to the surface. Torlinos are an indicator of impending eruption, and it talks about different volcanoes. Redoubt was the one where they first heard the whistle, the sound that it makes. Yeah, I've talked about that too before. It sounds like a, a teapot that some of the equipment can pick up prior to an eruption. The sound often gets so loud and so fast that the equipment cannot pick up after a short period of time, it gets so loud. Yeah, the machinery, the uh, digital recorders can't pick it up anymore. For some reason, up there at Denny Creek is uh, the one area that's been showing this a lot. I'll go to that site here in a minute. See that? Torlino screw waves. It actually looks like a little spring, don't it? Yeah. See that? 
Torlinos. And this is coming from the borehole at the Madison River area. All right, the other day when I did a report about Yellowstone, this site was not working. This is where the magma was coming in. Okay, let me go down and I'll make this bigger if I can. See, continuous sound. Yeah, sometimes the signature is much more distinct. I call this the sawtooth. That's an actual scientific term because it looks like um, a comb. Yeah, up and down. Yeah, continuous, continuous. And what was it showing when I pulled the files? Let me come down here. Yeah, so Denny Creek definitely been showing a lot of activity. Yeah. Yeah, the sawtooth. Or the comb. Any earthquake has a chance of being a foreshock for something much larger. And I've talked about how I feel there's going to be uh, probably a large earthquake coming in um, within, what, 18, now maybe 17 months because of the Torlinos that it's showing up in that location. Yeah, they're looking at the parking lot for some reason. And this here is the Firehole River. If they zoom in a little bit farther, I'm not going to hold my breath, but you can see all the trees that have died, the patches of white-looking trees. These trees grew up within the last 250 years. They call it the quiet period. And the gases that are coming up from the ground, um, from the volcanic gas, that is killing off the trees. There we go. They just moved the uh, camera. Another location where they have the tree die-off going on is in uh, California at the uh, Long Valley caldera I believe it is yeah they're checking out the different yeah see how we got trees dying here yeah a stump of one there maybe they'll move it again there they go oh they're pulling it out too far okay all right they moved it again yeah you know where the faults are because all you have to do is follow the line of trees All right, they moved it again to that back geyser. See all the trees that are dead here? Yeah. And we got some, one there and one there, and then you can't really see them up here behind because of the steam. A little bit of shaking. I wonder if there's another earthquake coming in. Yeah, there is that earthquake that was coming in as we watched the camera shaking. The one here at the bottom is the western boundary. Um, the one in the middle is Denny Creek. And then the one at the top, that is the borehole for Yellowstone Lake. So that should bring you up to date. Yeah, there's a lot more magnitude 2s and several magnitude 3s that they're downplaying. Got to keep an eye on it. Always be prepared. I've talked about one of the um, bunkers that they're building for the rich. Um, they actually got scrubbers for their air filtration system to take volcanic gas out before they put it into their bunker. It's one of these old missile silos um, that they are converting or have already converted. They're already all sold out um, for volcanic ash. So that makes you wonder. I believe that's in Kansas. I could be wrong. Um, anyways. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, be prepared. Please stay safe. And I will talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.